What's your area code and why do you have it? Do you ever think about that? Of course you haven't. <laughs> but I worked for Sprint for 10 years and I thought about that kind of stuff a lot. Never did anything with telephones, only with taxes and internal audit, but we were in the telecommunications industry. Let's first talk about your phone number. Your phone number has three distinct parts, an area code, an exchange, and a number. Your area code probably is 407, I like that area code, we'll see why later, or 321. I don't like that area code, except for one aspect of it, and we'll find out later. So my phone number is 407. 376, that's my exchange, which is just a group of numbers within your area, at least back in the old days. They were all together, so 376, and then four numbers, which is up to 10,000 numbers within an exchange. So it goes from 0000 to 9999. That's 10,000 numbers within each exchange. So that's how your thank you. That's how your phone number is constructed. Area code exchange and then your phone number. Let's talk about the telephone network. Now I'm going to go back to the ancient of days. The 70s and before. <laughs> so the ancient of days. And here's what happened. You would have in your home a telephone, a landline of course, because we didn't have mobile back then, a landline telephone, and it would be connected to some wires they would go out to the street and this is something called a pedestal. Which is just a group of all the local lines. And from the pedestal, they'd be grouped together in a bigger cable and it would probably go to a cabinet, which is just a bunch of, a bunch of lines. And then from the cabinet, it would go to a building called a central office. Have you ever heard of a central office? Exciting places, they have no windows. <laughs> they have no windows in a central office. Now I'm talking in the 70s and before, and if you were to walk into a central office back then, you would find a very busy, busy place, busier than, than Reed's brain. Hundreds of times. Because those switches, in the central office is where all the calls get switched to where they're supposed to go. And it was all mechanical, machines. What happens with machines? They have to be maintained. They wear out. They have to be oiled. There was actually a position, this is not sexist, there was a position in the central office back then called a frame dame. There were women. The switches were in frames and all the lines would come in. And the frame dame would maintain it because it was an old-fashioned mechanical machine. One thing about those old switches is they were stupid. I'm going to pretend that I'm a switch from the 70s. I'm either a relay, a crossbar, or a step-by-step -step switch. I'm stupid. Hi, my name is Thomas. I'm a mechanical switch. I'm dumb. I can't think. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. Monkey see, monkey do, but don't make me think. I'm just a stupid old mechanical switch. What else has changed, right? <laughs> so the people who came up with the numbers said, okay, you're a stupid switch. We're going to make it easy for you. Therefore, we had some rules of construction for area codes and exchanges. Your area code can never start with a one. You know why? You have to dial one for long distance. Yes. That would confuse this stupid switch the area code can never have a one at first. Also, in those days, the last digit, the three digits long, could never be a one. It was reserved. Now, of course, they can be. Three, two, one has one as the last digit. Also, the area code had to have a zero or a one as the second digit. So when it went to the switch, because the switch can't think, it would know what to do with it. So 407, I like that. So that the middle one is a zero. I don't like 321, except for one reason, which we'll see later, because the middle is not a zero. The exchange could not have a zero or a one in the middle, because that stupid switch would think it would be an area code. Now we know everything's changed now. 
Also, the people who were planning, they said, you know what? We need to reduce the number of clicks going to those central offices because we don't want to wear out the equipment. What is the biggest city in the United States? New York. New York. New York. New York. And what is the main area code? 212. 212. There you go. Okay. This is our demonstration. <laughs> Tawana is going to demonstrate dial 212. She even picked up this <laughs> That is five clicks. Yep. That's the least number of clicks. What? Pass it over to Steve. Steve, your turn. <laughs> what is the second biggest city in the United States? Los Angeles. Los Angeles. And you know what the area code is? The main area code? 213. Dial 213. <laughs> Six clicks. Uh -huh. Pass it over to our other visitor, Grace. What's the third largest city? Kathy used to live there. Baltimore. Chicago. 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 <laughs> Houston. I don't know. San Diego. <laughs> and the area code there is 312. Go ahead and dial 312. See how quick this goes? 312. Six clicks. And it went. And went so on like that with the biggest areas getting the numbers with the fewest clicks. Now notice each one of those numbers, 212, 213, and 312, have a one in the middle. You had to have a zero or a one. And the convention was that if there was a one in the middle, there could be other area codes for that state. So there's more area codes oh. in the beginning for oh. New York, for Illinois, oh. and for California. Oh, okay. Now, let's say we get really mad at the president or our congressman. We call Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. What is the main area code? Oh, shoot. You call your congressman, <laughs> give the phone to Curtis. You can tell we don't call very much. <laughs> You're supposed to get really mad at your congressman and you call 215? 202. 202. 202. So go ahead and dial 202. <laughs> now, the deal with 202 is the middle is a zero, which is 10 clicks. And the convention was that if you have a zero in the middle, there's only one area code per state, or only one for the District of Columbia. And the whole idea was to keep the number of clicks to a minimum for those cities that were getting lots and lots of incoming calls. Okay. Does anybody remember their phone number from growing up? Uh -huh. Give the phone to Scott. Now, this is going to take a long time. Doc, I want you to dial your whole number, including the area code. We are so used to speed. Mm -hmm. You don't even remember phone numbers nowadays. And the thing to remember, so while he's dialing and dialing and, dialing and, dialing and, dialing and, dialing and clicking and clacking and clicking and clacking and wearing out those stupid, old, dumb, mechanical switches, you know the rules have changed. Why have the rules changed? Now, when you walk into a central office, you don't hear click 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 click. You hear hum hum. Air conditioning keeping those computers cold. Um, it's all digital. The digital switches are smart. I don't care if the area code's three two one. I can handle it. I'm smart. Now the first digit still can't be a one. The first digit can't be a one. But the middle digit on the area code doesn't have to be a zero or a one. And the middle digit on the exchange can be a zero or a one. Very interesting. So we went from that to this. Now, do you know why we have the area code 321? We share it with the Space Coast. What's that, Adele? It's the countdown for the oh. Three, two, one, blast off. Wow. It's a novelty area code. You know, it's really fun to go to Daytona Beach. 386, that was fun. <laughs> In South Florida, there's an area code 786. You can get so much sun in South Florida. <laughs> and if you're in Knoxville, you're a big University of Tennessee fan, the volunteers, the area code spells out B-O-L. So that is our trip down memory lane. And now you know your area code, and you know why you have it. 
If anyone wants to play with my phone, start out only a quarter. We're pretending it's a pay phone. I want to get rich here. Quarters come to me, not to this soccer ball. Miss Dosen.